Welcome to the Weekly Leadership Experience, a place for leaders to get inspired, be challenged, and grow. I am your host, Rashad Oberlander. Let's get started. Today's episode of the Weekly Leadership Experience is brought to you by my 7-Day Leadership Growth Challenge. It's a free challenge that I've created, and it's delivered by email over the course of 7 days. I've created seven compelling questions to challenge various aspects of your leadership, the way you lead, and why you lead. Go to rashadoberlander.com and scroll down until you find the seven-day leadership challenge, or look for the link in the show notes. I have a review today from Ken Oberlander on the CastBox app. This is a fantastic podcast to boost your leadership skills and values. Topics and discussion are always on point and are really valuable for growth, not just as a leader, but as an individual as well. Rashad has a warm approachability in how he presents his content like it's a conversation with the listener. The guests are always inspiring and bring a varied and valuable perspective to the table. From discussing racism and biases with Deandra Judge, to leadership in video games with Christopher Mifsud. This podcast covers a diverse range of leadership material that really opens up your perspective. I highly recommend subscribing. Thank you so much, my friend, for this review. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to leave a review for me, you can go over to ratethispodcast.com slash weekly leader and leave me a review there. In the meantime, let's get on with the show. Hello, leaders, and welcome to the show. Today, I am joined by my good friend and mentor, Brett Halliday. Brett is a highly accomplished executive with 27 years' experience across a breadth of functional operations in multiple countries. Brett moved his family to Canada in 2007 to spearhead the Canadian expansion for Michael Hill Jeweler and spent over 13 years at the helm to build the business to 86 stores from coast to coast. Brett started his career in the Royal Australian Navy and understands that discipline and continuous training and development are the foundations of success. Brett is now a trusted advisor to the New Zealand government and works closely with New Zealand Trade and Enterprise to provide support and guidance for New Zealand companies looking to expand internationally. Brett believes you must bring your whole self to the table if you want to thrive in today's competitive world, your personality, your sense of humor, discipline, and most importantly, your heart. All of these elements contribute to Brett's ambition to share his knowledge and experience to help individuals and small business owners achieve their wildest dreams. Brett, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Rashad. It's uh, great to uh, be here and uh, chat with you as usual. I always enjoy uh, speaking with you. Thanks, Brett. Uh, It's a conversation been a long time coming. I'm really excited to um, chat a bit bit about what I already know uh, about your career, but share it with the listeners and some of the lessons we can learn. So why don't you just start with a bit about your story, starting off with young Brett and up to now. Yeah, well, it all started, uh, obviously, from my accent for those Canadian listeners back in Australia. And uh, I grew up in a a very blue-collar, sports-orientated city just north of Sydney called Newcastle and uh, well-renowned for its coal mining. So from a young age... Most uh, most young guys, as we left school, we we headed into the steel making industry, um, and hence I did. I left school when I was uh, just before my sixteenth birthday, and went off into uh, BHP, the steel making industry, um, where started an electrical apprenticeship of all things. And after a couple of years, realised that there was more on the horizon, and I actually joined the Royal Australian Navy, um, and then for the following six years. Uh, travelled the world uh, on three different ships, uh, but was fortunate enough to venture off through Southeast Asia uh, to Hawaii, all the Pacific Island nations, New Zealand, all around Australia, and had a wonderful career uh, in the Royal Australian Navy as a as an aircraft um, controller or a radar plotter, aircraft controller, and and learn a lot of things. And obviously, looking back on that, Rashad, you know, a lot of the disciplines camaraderie, teamwork um, that I learned in the in the Navy uh, certainly carried with me right through my my um, my past yeah 30 40 years in, in business world when I look back and those things really um, really stayed with me and solidified I suppose my success 
Um, yeah, during my time in the Navy, I met my now wonderful wife, Michelle, um, and uh, decided to finish my career and, and you know, get a get a real job, as sort of she said, you know, I could have stayed at sea and stayed single or get out and get married and, and uh, have a family. So we did the latter. And and that embarked, I uh, met Michael, and that embarked a, a, a great 27-year career at Michael Hill, where I uh, started as a trainee store manager, moved into store management, relocated three times as a store manager, and was fortunate enough to uh, be sent to Western Australia to open up the uh, Western Australian division as the regional manager. And in four years there, I opened 14 stores. And I suppose on the back of that success that I had with um, Michael, who in Western Australia opening stores, uh, the next venture was uh, to move to Canada and take over from Emma after she opened the first few stores. And I arrived here in 2007, um, and from 2007 till now, 2020, he opened up uh, you know, the finalised of the 86 stores and finished the expansion. And what a wonderful journey it's been, and it was fantastic, uh, building a, an amazing team of the future leaders and those people that have now uh, followed in my footsteps and, and taken over the succession of um, the Michael Hill going forward. And and now really, you know, my my ambition, like you said, is now I, I just, you know, want to share my knowledge, my experience um, and help the future leaders um, and small business owners uh, achieve success. And if I can help them live out their wildest dreams and have a have a career that's half as good as what mine has been, I'll be very, very happy. Mm, awesome. Well, that's really cool. And, um, you know, over the course of your c- career with Michael Hill, uh, you had the opportunity to work at the multiple different leadership levels that you've described. Um, you know, why don't you talk a little bit about some of those different leadership levels, what it's like being there and what you learned kind of as you through your career? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think, think part of being a, a good leader um, and gaining knowledge and skills and behaviours is actually working at the, working on the front line. Um, and so, you know, being a trainee manager or a store manager essentially in those first few stores yeah, the daily grind, you know, I was fortunate enough, Michael Hill was very, very new in Australia and we were only, we just started to expand. So we weren't well known, we didn't have a brand um, and in the jewellery field it took, took takes a long time for customers to convert over from where they've always shopped, you know. So, you know, it, it can be quite difficult, you know, there's can be long days of no customers and, you know, trying to build that brand. So, the, the disciplines um, and getting things right when you do speak to customers, uh, the, you know, following the playbook, so to speak, you know, like there's, um, you know, the steps to a sale and building the brand and educating the customers on the brand and why you're about and converting converting those customers into sales was, was really quite challenging uh, early on, you know, that, the advertising was just starting to cut through. So you had to had a lot of roles to play and learning all the new parts of the business um, whilst opening new stores and training new team members. And and for me, learning about jewellery, you know, I, I'd, I'd come from the Navy, you know, I spent time at sea, I didn't know anything about jewellery. So learning learning the, the jewellery, learning the art of selling, um, you know, opening new stores, converting a new brand, those uh, formative years, you know, when I spent eight years or nearly eight years as a store manager, um, so that laid a fantastic foundation of me to move to regional management and then obviously to general management or president, you know, of the, of the country. Um, I think it was that foundation and the disciplines and, and the daily grind that that really um, that went along with it. Um, I, I speak to a lot of uh, you know, younger store managers or younger uh, people in retail at the moment, and they always want that next level sooner. They will, oh, I want to be a regional. I want to be this. Or, and, and I always say, you know, like, take take your time. Like, you know, I, I, you know, the eight years that I spent as a store manager was probably the best eight years. You know, it really solidified and, and I had to learn that craft. Um, 
And then when I got to got to regional management, you know, and and my first regional manager was to go to a brand new um, state. So went to Western Australia, which is like going to a new country. And so to go out to a, a new state to open stores as a regional manager um, was quite difficult again. But it was the the foundation that I learned in the early days of you know, building a customer base, getting the right team in place, training and developing uh, those store managers, how I had been trained and developed, uh, really led to the success. And, and we opened 14 stores and very, very successfully um, in four years in Western Australia. And then, again, I suppose, building on that foundation of being in a new market with little support because Western Australia is like, it's, you know, it's uh, like Canada, it's like Vancouver to Toronto. So I didn't have a lot of support from head office. So I was out there by myself in a new area. So then when it came time to relocate and move to Canada, um, whilst Western, you know, Perth to Sydney was uh, you know, five hours away, um, Canada to Australia was 20, 24 hours away, but it really was the same thing. So to relocate the family um, and come up here and build some new stores and and build a team really was just uh, an extension of what I'd done in Western Australia and I, I brought those skills with me. One thing I suppose, Rashad, if I just touch on is as a store manager, I worked under seven different regional managers and everybody has something to offer and I think it was Based on that, I took a little piece away from each of those seven regional managers and whether I agreed with them or disagreed or liked or, or, or loved them, it didn't matter, right? Um, I had my job to do and they had their job to do, but I watched how they did their job and I took a little piece away from them. I said, okay, when I'm going to be a regional manager, I have to do this task or I have to do this, this role. I like how they do that. I don't like how they do that. And I like how this person does that. And I like how that. And so I suppose I had I was fortunate enough from all of those seven different regionals with all their different styles, I took the best of each of them, each of them and and sort of um, built built my own, built my own sort of brand, uh, so to speak. Yeah, and that's a really important um lesson I think that a lot of people need to really key into. Um, and is one of the ways that I do try to live my life. You know, everyone has something to teach you. Yep. yep. Um, uh, carry on. Yeah. Oh no, I was just going to say. You know, you know, what, one of the one of the key points is there is a lesson to be learnt from everyone that you meet. Uh, the question is, are you open to that information? And when you open yourself up to learn from everybody that you meet, irrespective of who they are, what role they play. And not so much to, um, you know, I never blamed my regionals. If I had a bad day or bad week or bad month, I didn't blame them for their part. I still had my job to do, um, but I still took something, something away, uh, something away, away from them. You know. I want to come back to that in a little bit here, but I just want to touch on something else that you mentioned, talking about, you know, the transition from being in the Navy to, you know, jumping in feet, you know, headfirst into retail. It's quite a, quite a change and transition. So I guess two part question, like what are the lessons you learned being in the Navy? And then how did, how did that serve you in your career? Um, well, the lessons I learned from the Navy, you know, if I go to discipline and put them into examples is, you know, clean your shoes every day you know like and, and i still you know i still remember you know i still now if 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 i interview someone or i meet someone for the first time i can't help but look at their shoes you know someone that cleans their shoes every day and has a discipline of of, of that and portraying the best image um you know, that, that certainly goes a long way, right? Like if someone can't clean their shoes or look after their shoes, you know, you can you can wear a, an old suit with a really nice pair of shoes and look a million dollars, or you can wear a million dollar suit with a bad pair of shoes 
and and it really takes a, takes away from it, right? So, you know, I learned that you know the discipline of always being you know well presented. Obviously, in the in the navy, though, know, from a uniform point of view, you're well presented all the time, and the discipline of those little behaviours um, it really solidifies that. The other one is um, don't be late. You know, apart from in the navy, if you're late, there's there's bad, there's heavy consequences or fines that come along with it. But you know, if you're not ten minutes early, you're late. And you know, I took that into the business world too. I remember, you know. When I was at when I was a trainee store manager, no one beat me to the store every morning. I had the I had the the carpet vacuumed before the staff arrived. And as a leader, you know, this, when the staff turn up and hey, there's the manager or the trainee manager. They've already done the carpet. They've got things set up. They're prepared for the morning meeting. Yeah, they're they're ready for the day when the staff arrive. But that's someone you know like. Don't don't be tardy. Don't be late. Turn up. Be there. You know, be, before your team. Um, teamwork is, is a big one. You know, when you when you're on a ship with three hundred people, everybody has a job to do, and and you know, it's a lean team. And if you go down, no one like that. That someone else has got to do your job. Right? That you. Know, Everybody has a job to do, and it's and everyone's job is as important as everybody else's. You know, it doesn't matter who on that ship um, has something to do, but every job is is as important as each other. Um, so every person on the team, and I think that goes back to you know it, from a sporting background, Richard. Yeah, every everybody on the team team is important. Um, and and the other thing is to I suppose celebrate. Um, obviously, you know, like uh, you know, people always say, you know, people in the navy, or the, all they see is drunken sailors when they're ashore. But you know, we spend a lot of time at sea, a lot of time uh, working hard. You know, when you do get a chance as a, as a, as a team to make sure that you celebrate those wins, um, and you know, you work hard for it. Um, and and it really is important to to celebrate with your team members. And I suppose, and the last thing that I took from from the Navy is practice, practice, practice. Every single day of my Navy career, we practiced or oh, did an exercise, an emergency exercise, whether it was a fire, um, a flood, you know, uh, an, an attack or a medical emergency. Um, every day, all we did, our, our whole existence was to practice real life situations, um, ultimately for the worst case scenario. And, and you know, thankfully that never came uh, in my career. Um, I, I didn't see active duty, but we were always ready. And so in my retail career, you know, it wasn't about reading a book and learning. It wasn't about doing a module and, and learning. It wasn't about a training guide. Um, it was actually real-life situations. So I was always very, very big on role-play, 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 but role-playing real-life situations. As soon as the customer left, okay, what did they say? How did you act? Could you have done this better? What could you do? And, yes, it seems difficult, but it's real-life coaching like real on-floor coaching, role-playing and practising real-life scenarios because they're the ones that are going to matter. Um, and it's not about what you didn't do that time, it's what can you do next time to make sure that it's a success. Yeah. And, you know, some of my listeners might might know this already, but, you know, I worked for Michael Hill for a number of years and uh, I can say that that was, that was a practice that was... Uh, frequently spoken of at Michael Hill. <laughs> but it was valuable. And I mean, I think that the other behaviors and, and lessons that you're identifying from your time in the Navy, they're, they're, not, they're not overly earth-shattering. They're not overly difficult, but they're small, daily, regular practices that you can do in your leadership that make a significant difference. Yeah. So that's important. Um, you talked about um, you know learning something from everybody, and you talked about needing someone sort of kind of giving you that coach and mentorship 
aspect like what 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 is so what is so important about that for people in leadership i mean from frontline to you know you're running a whole country like what why is that so important um everybody needs a coach right um and it's somebody that i suppose that you have I, I, when when I choose a coach or a mentor, um, and I've had a couple of you know great ones over the years that have certainly helped me along the way, you have to have total confidentiality. Um, I believe it has to be someone from outside of your organisation. Now I say that, look, you can have a mentor in your organisation that you speak with about your organisation role, and they can pass on you know um you know the history and what what the next role could be and they steer you through the organization and help but but i'm talking about someone here that's outside of your organization uh that that you can actually rely on because it, it, is, it is important to speak to someone other than usually your boss um and that and that's where the confidentiality comes into of course now, a lot of people have fears of working with coaches or mentors that, oh, I don't want to say something or talk about something because it'll get back to the organisation. Um, and, and, and that's a real fear. So make sure that there's total confidentiality uh, outside the organisation. But what it does, it's just somebody there that's they're sitting on your, on, on your shoulder when you're making that decision. Uh, they will challenge you. They're not, a coach isn't there to tell you what to do. A coach isn't going to do the work for you, right? But a coach is going to hold you accountable for what you said you were going to do. Um, right? And they will ask you the tough questions and help you then uncover why you didn't achieve. You know, if you said, hey, I'm going to do X by the 14th and you turn up on the 14th or the 15th and you haven't done it, well, if there's no one there going, going to ask you why you didn't do it or what stopped you from doing it or what could you have done better next time basically you know you're not going to grow you're not going to learn you know there's no accountability i um i i, I sort of I, I play a lot of golf richard and and i sort of use the analogy you know if you go out and and, and play golf at at the end of the hole you can write down any score you want Right. If you had an eight, you can write down four. Okay, you can you can write that down. The only person you do, any person that's going to hurt is yourself. You're just cheating yourself, right? So if you're not honest with yourself, and that coach is the person that's going to actually hold you, help hold you accountable, right? And 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 ask you those tough questions. Um, you should share the, your goals with them too, right? Um, you get it's easy to write down a goal, but if you don't share it with someone. Um, then oh well, I didn't get there, so it doesn't really matter, right? But that that person um, is is going to hold you accountable and, and help you. They should also too be someone that um, has possibly or is in a position of where you want to be or has done what you want to do. So at least there's that. Um, yeah, they understand the the struggles that you're probably going going through. Um, and they can help guide you through there. And the other part is too is um, it's the perfect way to expand your network. You know, having a referral to senior leaders or having a referral to a network of uh, the, the the business world through your coach um, is is probably uh, one of the greatest the the greatest uh, assets that you can have. You know. Um, yeah, that it will open doors for you that um, that you may not, might take a long time to break down. Um, and I suppose in my, you know, as an example, you know, when I arrived in Canada, uh, I I found myself a, a, an amazing gentleman um, who was my coach here in in the eleven years that or the first eleven years that, that I was uh, in Canada, and he had. Um, basically run a big organization you know a jewelry organization in in, in North America uh, he sat sat on lots of uh, boards around the world in different positions uh, he's still quite active in, in the Canadian business and to have him that I could 
uh, speak to on a regular basis, ask the tough questions to. Uh, he introduced me to to people that I may not have met that that helped him in, in our success. But he always challenged me. You know, whenever I met him, he was always challenged me. Okay, what have you done about this? What have you done about that? You said you were going to do that. When are you going to get that done by? Um, and he really really accelerated accelerated my personal learning and, and my personal growth. And I, I certainly, you know, um, a lot of people know who I'm talking about, but re, be remiss of me not to mention his name, but a gentleman by the name of Claire Copeland. And, um, you know, I'll be forever um, in his debt for what he did uh, for me in, in, in the growth of Michael Hill in Canada. Yeah, so, I mean, absolutely important that everyone get a coach and have people in their corner to not only help them grow, but keep them accountable. Yeah. If you were going to be giving advice to your younger self or someone like you, you know, person just starting out as a manager or a young leader, what are the things you would say? It's not going to be easy. Uh, it's, it, it, it's not. Um, and, um, and be very clear uh, for your vision or your or your goals. Um, so I suppose the best thing is, again, with your coach or with somebody else, really define what it is that you want to achieve uh, and make sure that's very, very clear. Uh, it, it, it is um, measurable um, and you really believe it. Because when you have a very clear goal, that keeps you, you know, crystal clear. Like it, 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 your, your, I suppose your your vision. Um, and when you jump out of bed every day, you know exactly what you need to do. Uh, you know, and you know the example when we came to Canada. You know, we we wanted to have a hundred stores. Like I left Australia, we said we're going to have a hundred stores by twenty twenty. Like that was that was crystal clear, and that message permeated out through the organization as I built the stores and you know obviously yeah as, as you know and so it kept me really clear like I knew hey if we're going to have 100 stores I've got to have the best team I've got to have 100 great store managers so our training need to be really sharp I've got to go and find the location so we we're focused on what malls are we going to be and what locations are we going to have so we had a team for there um you know, so it really kept everybody in the organization clear, focused, um, with, with, with a purpose, and there was a purpose to strive for. So, you know, if you're just starting out, yeah, I'll go and open a business or have a great idea, but get your vision or your mission statement or your goals as um, as sharp or as clear as possible. Um, and that will keep your thinking and your thoughts very, very focused. So you're, you're laser focused. And then also, too, um, be healthy, right? Be healthy. You, you can't run a business um, if your mind's not clear, um, if you're not healthy. Now, I'm, you know, I'm not saying you have to go to the gym every day or you, you can't eat this or you can't drink that or, you know, you've got to have a strict regime. But you do need to be healthy. You you do have to look after yourself. Um, eat, you know, even if it's just going for an, an hour walk every day to clear your head, right? Um, taking time off, making sure you take holidays, um, eating eating properly, and looking after yourself because you have to be healthy um, for yourself, your family, and your team members. Um, and and, that, and that's very very important. I think good advice for anyone listening. Absolutely. When you think about the leadership that you've experienced at, at a number of different levels, Brett, um, what have you found to be the same at at all those levels? What's the same kind of thing, no matter what you're doing and what level of a team you're leading? Um, and what I'm getting at is, is what is it that all leaders need to do for themselves and for their teams, building on what you've already explained just now? Um, the, the, the biggest one, uh, that I would say is to block out time in your calendar and whether you do it weekly or biweekly, 
uh, but regularly block out time as thinking time. Turn your cell phone off, turn your email off, um, and actually block that time out and just think. And that's difficult to do because everybody's so busy. Oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. But but you have to. Um, and again, Claire, my my coach, he really made me you know realize this and and used to challenge me on it. And when you get into the habit of doing it, and look, there's various ways. Lots of people like to do it different ways. I used to. I had my 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 original office was in my basement at home before we had head office. And I'd sit down there, um, you know, turn all my devices off, and I would have paper everywhere. I'd have old files or notes, and I, I would just think. And when you don't go with an agenda, when you don't use that time and go, oh, I'm, I'm going to use it to do this or whatever, when you actually don't have anything and you just start to think, it's sort of like meditation. And then all of a sudden, things start flying at you from left, right, and you go, Oh, I've got to get onto that. Oh, I haven't done that yet. I haven't done that. And the big things actually come that surface to the top. The big strategic, um, you know, ideas or things that you haven't done actually start to start to bubble through, and they break through all of the all of the messages and the emails and the things that are clouding your day, and actually they surface through. And I, I found it like a meditation. Now, I wasn't. I've, I've never been. Um, or done a lot of meditation, but just sitting, thinking, and I'd start reading, you know, different things, but the big messages started to come through very, very loud and clear, and that was really important. And then you go, right, I've got to deal with that. Then the other part on the back of that then, Rashad, is I think great leaders act fast, right? Um and you know, Claire used to always say, oh, "I never, re- I'll never forget this." He he always says this: "When you know, you know." And what he meant by that is, you know, you know when you've got to make a decision. You know when you've got to act, either on a strategy or on um, a, a, a team or a, a target or a result. You you know, and when you know, you know. So act and act fast, act decisively, um, and that. But that will also go with having a really clear vision. So, if you have a very clear vision, you take regular time out to sit and think, right? And then you act fast. Um, those three things coupled together will propel you to great success. And I think that you know it's the it's the um it's not very radical, but it's not very well practiced is, is, you know, taking time to sit and think we're not comfortable with our own solitude, right? We're, we're so used to the world of marketing messages and, and technology. And, you know, we don't, we don't take that time, which yeah. is actually very powerful. Yeah. Um, and, and, and look, that's where, a, that's where a coach or your mentor basically will help and that's a good starting point because if you regularly go and see them and you block out an hour you're not going to have your cell phone on you're not going to be checking emails while you're with them right so basically what they're doing is they're training you to be okay let's just focus on you and a plan or your goals or what you've achieved so they're actually making you in a way take that hour or two hours or three hours whatever time spot time slot you have with them um, where you're just thinking about the big big key things so they're actually sort of forcing that habit anyway and that's what you know that's what what Claire did for me you know when I used to go and see him it was okay we're just going to focus on these two or three big issues and then you go okay and you get used to that and then I could then I actually started doing that by myself even more regularly because I saw the value in it and that hour or two hours, well, nothing happened. Like the world didn't blow up when I didn't have my phone on, right? When I wasn't checking my emails or, you know, looking at my phone, like, okay, everything gets gets by, you know. Um, your, your team will sort it out. They will grow. But, you know, they'll do their job. And I, I, I think sometimes you just got to see that, that, you know, you can take an hour or two hours out of your day 
And, yeah, the world's not going to fall around and around you, right? Sometimes we're not as important as we think we are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's really good. And I think there's a number of powerful points in what you've just said. As we begin to wrap up, Brett, um, last couple of questions for you. Uh, number one, what is one thing you know about life or leadership that you wish everyone knew? Yeah, I, I, and look, I'll go back to what I said earlier, Richard, you know, and I, I had this down. There is a lesson to be learned from everyone that you meet, and the question is, are you open to the information? Um, and, yeah, that's that's a big one. If 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 everybody understood, um, you know, not to dismiss anyone that you meet. Uh, you come across people for a reason in your life. You meet people all the time for a reason. There's a there's a reason that that paths cross, um, and it is to learn something. Um, and it, and everybody that you meet, whether it's you know children or the elderly or your peers or a network or whatever, yeah, you know, there's a lesson to be learned. And and if we open our minds and sometimes our hearts and um, drop our egos and be a little bit more humble. Um, we can actually learn something from everybody, and you know, and and you know, I've certainly had I've been fortunate enough to learn a lot of lessons from a lot of people, and you know, now it's for us to 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 give back. Mm -hmm. Very cool. When it's all said and done, what three words do you want to be used to describe your life? I actually uh, thought about this quite a while, even before speaking to you, Richard. You know, in in building sort of my next sort of future and um, you know what what I'm going to be doing, and I came up with three words: uncover, develop, and inspire. And so, you know, um, I want to help people uncover you know, their their own internal talent, um, uncover opportunities. Um, un, you know, in business opportunities, um, uncover talent inside organisations. There's people working in organisations that will be great. It's about are we looking at those people that we can uncover and and to um, to bring them through, develop, you know, training and development of our teams, training and development of ourselves, you know. We should be, uh, one thing, leaders are, are lifelong learners. Um, we should always be de developing our own skills and behaviours and developing our team. And then once we're developing them and we've got them on that journey, then it's about inspiration. How do we inspire our teams? How do we inspire ourselves? Right? Um, as, as leaders, you know, look for the things that you can celebrate every day. Um, write big goals and share them with the world um, and ha have big dreams and go out and achieve them. Mm -hmm. Those are really good, uh, really good words to describe, Brett. Appreciate that. I know you've got a few things on the go and, and everything. Where can people connect with what you're doing and learn more about being a better leader? Uh, yeah, you can, can uh, connect with me, obviously, via uh, LinkedIn, Richard. I'm, I'm very sort of active on there. I've got a few, few videos I like to uh, keep people updated, uh, post some articles. Um, and look out for my new upcoming uh, website. Um, it'll be out very, very shortly, obviously, by the time uh, this podcast goes out. And that's uh, will be at uh, www.frogo.ca, uh, spelled F-R-O-G-G-O. Uh, there is a story behind the name Frogo. Um, for those that want to learn out more, you can reach out and uh, maybe over a beer, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the little the little story behind that. Beauty. Well, I'll make sure to get those links in the show notes over at rashadoberlander.com. Check it out there. This has been a great conversation with Brett Halliday. Thank you so much for joining me, Brett. And uh, we will talk to you again soon. Yeah, thanks, Rashad. It's been fantastic. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, would you head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe, leave me a rating, leave me a review, and share this with a friend. It spreads the word and helps the podcast grow. You can also find me on social media 
at reoverlander. Until next time, stay awesome.